Assume the given sample data below is being used to estimate the population proportion and calculate the margin of error. The confidence level is 90% and out of 690 trials, 298 were successful. Alright, when a problem asks you to construct the margin of error, they're basically asking you to do the first three steps of a confidence interval. This particular confidence interval is about the population proportion. So I'm going to do the first three steps of constructing a confidence interval to estimate the population proportion. So my first step in that is always going to be to copy down the relevant information from the problem. The things we need for confidence interval about the proportion is the sample size. We usually need a p hat, a q hat, a confidence level, and alpha. So we're going to need these quantities. Now the n is the total sample size. It's the total number of trials. In this case that's 690. The p hat is usually given as a decimal or a percent or they give you two numbers that you can use to construct the p hat. So in this case I don't have a decimal or percent except for the confidence level. So that's going to go here. So we can't use that for p hat of course. So what we need to do then is to figure out how to derive p hat. Well remember p hat is often expressed as x over n where x is the number of successes and n is the number of trials. So if that's the case, 298 successes divided by the total 690 trials. From there we'll be able to determine a decimal representation of p hat. q hat is easier, it's just 1 minus p hat, so once we know what p hat is we'll be able to get q hat. Let's get the p hat using our calculator. So I'll type 298 and then I will divide by 690 and that gives me 0.432 if I round to three decimal places. You want to use at least three decimal places. So I'll call this 0.432. Now 1 minus p hat will be 1 minus 0.432, which will end up giving you 0.568. So there's your p hat, there's your q hat, you have your confidence level. Of course, alpha and the confidence have to add up to 100%. So this must be 10%, so 90 and 10 make 100. The next step of the process is to come up with Z alpha divided by 2. So Z alpha divided by 2 means take this alpha value, chop it in half. So half of 10% is 0 0.05. And then we're going to look that up on our, our T table or our Z chart, depending on which one you want to use, and you'll end up with your critical Z value. For these critical z values, I prefer to use the t table when I can because it's faster and it gives you an extra decimal place of accuracy. Alright, so here we are on our t table and we're looking for our alpha divided by 2 value which is found here and we're going to go down to the bottom where the critical z values are located. They're only located in the last row of this table and so we see that the answer is 1.645. Alright, so with that answer 1.645, we're going to take that value and plug it into the formula for the margin of error. So the formula for the margin of error for a confidence interval for the proportion is essentially E is equal to Z alpha divided by 2 times the square root of P hat Q hat divided by N. So we're going to have 1.645 times the square root of this number 0.432 times this number 0.568 And then we're going to divide all of that by the 690. So we just need to evaluate this with our calculator. Let's show how that's done. So we will type in 1.645 times, then we'll enter the square root. And we're going to type 0.432, just times here. Don't put any extra parentheses, just push times and then 0.568, then divided by 690, then close up your square root and press enter. And you will get the answer 0.031, and that is the solution for the margin of error.